What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this custom gaming desk or video editing desk or whatever intense computer work you do. The trick is it has a lift top with gas struts, so it's an assisted lift. It's got holes cut out for all your components. Your components all sit inside here, so your hard drives, video cards, all that kind of stuff goes inside. You've got your power button and USB hub on the front as well as more USB and a power outlet here. You've got cable ports on the back to run your monitor cables in. This desk is 75 by 30, so very big desktop, plenty of room to hold three widescreen monitors, and it also has a keyboard tray. So I will have plans available for this if you want to build one for yourself. This is going to be a two-part build. In part one, I'll show you how to break down the materials and how to build the cabinet carcasses and the midsection. So stay tuned. The first step in this project was breaking down the materials. So to break down the sheets of plywood, I used a combination of a track saw, miter saw, and table saw. If you were hard pressed, you could definitely break down all the pieces with a circular saw, but it would be tough to get everything perfectly square. In total, I used three pieces of three quarter inch plywood, one sheet of half inch plywood, and one sheet of quarter inch plywood. The total cost of the wood on this build was roughly 200 bucks, at least in my area. For the plywood, I used Pure Bond hardwood plywood, which you might have heard about before on my channel. Pure Bond is the sponsor of this video, and I use their plywood for pretty much any of my indoor plywood projects. Pure Bond is made in North America, uses formaldehyde free glue, and is just great quality. To learn more about Pure Bond, check out the link in the video description below. This desk is pretty big and was designed to hold three 23 inch widescreen monitors on the desktop. The top is 74 inches by 31 inches, and the total height of the desk is 30 inches, including the height of the casters I used. So let's take a look at the SketchUp model just so you can get a better idea of how the final pieces come together. So here's the complete desk, and you might be able to tell that it's made up of three distinct structures here. And let's take a look at the cabinet legs first. They're fairly basic except for a few unique features. First, there are these channels, which are designed for routing the cables down from the midsection through the legs and out the back of the cabinets. Next, on the right cabinet, there is a compartment to house a subwoofer. The client I built this for planned to keep the subwoofer that goes along with his computer speakers in this compartment, and he lined the inside of the compartment with foam. There's a hole on the left side of the cabinet for the sound to come out of and there's an access panel on the right side of the cabinet for accessing the controls as well as allowing the sub to be removed if needed. Now let's take a look at the midsection. This center divider is really the heart of this desk since this is where the computer components will actually mount. Obviously you'll need to customize the whole placement based on your specific components. Behind this divider there's a channel for the cables to route through. These front dividers house computer fans to assist with circulation and they also have notches for cable routing. On the back of the midsection, there are cable pass-through brush plates for routing the cables from the monitors into the desk to connect them to the video card. And last, there are holes in the back corner where the cables will pass down into the cabinet legs into the cable channels we saw previously. So now that you've seen the basic design, let's get to actually building the desk. After breaking down all the pieces, I cut the various holes I needed, starting with these holes for the cables to route through the back of the cabinets. Next, I drilled pocket holes into the pieces of the cabinet carcasses and spaced the holes roughly six to 10 inches. I also made sure to orient the holes so that they were facing the inside or back of the cabinet so that they're not seen in the final piece. If you'd like to build one of these desks for yourself, I do have plans available on my website with a detailed cut list, a cutting diagram for breaking down your sheet goods, and a SketchUp file. And with the SketchUp file, you'll be able to modify the size or layout of the desk to suit your exact needs. I'll have a link to the plans in the video description below as well as at the end of this video. For assembly, I used wood glue and pocket screws and just checked for a square along the way. One tip, when using pocket screws, pieces can have a tendency to drift on you. If you use some clamps to hold your pieces in place, it is extremely helpful in keeping everything nice and flush and square. 
I assembled the cable channel using brad nails and glue and just glued and brad nailed it into place in the cabinet. The cabinet stretchers are also attached with pocket screws as well. Next, I needed to cut the holes for the subwoofer compartment. This is the hole on the left side of the cabinet. As you can see, I'm using a piece of MDF here. That's because I didn't pay attention to my cutting diagram and accidentally miscut my plywood. So I had to make do with a piece of MDF that I had on hand. As you can see here, I also cut the other hole for the subwoofer access panel, but forgot to get footage of this. I just used the table saw and made sure to keep the off cut as that will become the actual access panel for the subwoofer compartment. This cabinet is assembled the same way using pocket screws and glue. And again, clamps really help here, especially on a piece this big. I also had to use inch and a quarter screws in a few spots where pocket holes weren't an option. I also unfortunately lost a little footage of assembling the subwoofer compartment itself, but this is fairly easy to figure out if you're looking at the SketchUp model. It's basically just a compartment within the cabinet and is built using pocket holes. With the cabinets assembled, I moved on to assembling the midsection. First, I attached the back using glue and inch and a quarter screws through the bottom. I made sure everything was nice and square here as this piece will be what I reference the rest of the pieces off of during assembly. Next, I attached the sides, first tacking them into place using brad nails and glue, and then reinforcing them with screws through the bottom. For the front of the midsection, I wanted to cut some vent holes into the pieces instead of just cutting one big hole and adding some plastic vents. Mainly this was for aesthetics, but it also allowed me to get a little more practice on my new CNC, which I am having a ton of fun with. I used a quarter inch end mill to cut the vents, and then also cut a hole for the USB hub and power button. There are two of these front pieces on the midsection, each with a unique piece of electronics that needed to be mounted. So it was great practice for me to cut these both on the CNC. Obviously a CNC is not required for this build and you could easily cut the holes with a jigsaw. Once I had the pieces cut, I attached the front pieces with glue and screws just like the rest of the side pieces. Next, I assembled the inner side structure using pocket screws and then glued and screwed it into place. This extra plywood in the middle of these inner sides will be cut away, so it made for a great temporary work surface for cutting the holes into these dividers, which hold the fans you see in the background of this shot. The fans line up with the vents on the front of the midsection, which I cut in the last step, and provide really good circulation inside the desk. These dividers are also attached with pocket screws. Next, I needed to cut away the excess plywood. So first I drilled some holes through the top to give me points of reference for when I flipped the midsection over. And once I flipped it over, I drew some reference lines with a square just to make sure I didn't accidentally cut into the sidewalls. Then I added some screws from below to reinforce the inner side walls and then cut away the excess plywood with a jigsaw. I left about a quarter of an inch of extra plywood just to give me a little wiggle room to make sure I didn't hit the side walls. I flushed up the edges with a flush trim bit on the router and this made a huge mess. Definitely wear a dust mask when you're doing this type of router work, even if you're using dust collection on your router. Next, I needed to cut the holes in the back of the midsection for the three cable pass-through brush plates. I made a quick jig for this since I needed to cut three of these holes on the back of the midsection and two of these holes behind the keyboard tray on the front of the midsection. I initially tried to cut these using the jigsaw for the holes behind the keyboard tray and they just looked really sloppy. So I whipped up a quick template and then used a router and a template bit to cut the holes instead. This left me with a nice clean hole and it was much faster than the jigsaw method. The final piece of the midsection was the center divider with all the holes for mounting the computer components. This piece really intimidated me and I was worried that if I cut the holes by hand with the jigsaw, the spacing wouldn't quite line up. 
The piece is 70 and a half inches long, about twice the maximum length I can cut on my CNC, but I had the idea that I could run one file and cut half of the holes, then flip the piece over lengthwise, and then run another file to cut the rest of the holes on the other half. I only had one piece of plywood this long in the shop, so I either got this right or would have had to go to the store to buy more plywood, but luckily it worked flawlessly. Before flipping the piece, I made some reference lines to make sure everything lined up properly, and it all worked out great. I attached the divider with pocket screws and didn't glue it in place, just in case any of the computer components are changed and the holes need to be adjusted in the future. Last, I cut the holes in the back corner of the midsection, which is where the cables will pass through down into the legs. And with those cut, the first half of this project is done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed part one of this build. This was a huge undertaking for me. In part two, I will be showing you how to build the drawer boxes and install the drawer fronts, uh, make the top, as well as install all the hardware and apply finish. Again, I have plans available on my website if you're interested in building this for yourself. I'll have a link to that in the video description. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed so you don't miss the next part of this and also all of my upcoming project videos. I have new projects every Tuesday. Also, if you wanna support me, check out the affiliate links in the video description. They cost you nothing and really help me out. I've got links to all the tools I used and all the materials. So stay tuned for next week. And until next time, happy building, guys.